What is up, everybody? Welcome back once again to Hot Toys Hotline. As always, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. We are currently sitting at about 270 subscribers and we have a goal of 500 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and also drop a like on this video. Uh, guys, we will be putting out the 250 subscriber giveaway video soon to win that Arkham Series Harley Quinn Hot Toy. So that's another incentive to get yourself subscribed because you will need to do that to enter. Uh, but I have a different one for you today. Typically, obviously, we cover all 1-6 scale stuff on this channel. But I thought this was cool enough, especially for you Star Wars fans, that some of you would like to see it. So today, we have an unboxing and a review of the D23 exclusive Obi-Wan Kenobi Legacy Lightsaber set. Let's jump down to the light box and take a closer look at the set and all of the details on these sabers. I think I'm ready to start my journey as a Jedi. Let's see what lies beyond this mysterious box. Alright everybody, here we are in the light box with all three sabers from the D23 exclusive Legacy Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber set. Before we get started, I just want to apologize for that corny little intro I just did. I am a big fan of Star Wars as you guys know, so I had to get a little corny with it. But uh, but hey, you gotta get corny every once in a while in life, right? Um, so I'm gonna go through each saber individually. I'll share any details I know about them, including what films they're from, um, and any fun facts I might know about them. Uh, but let's get started with the Episode 1 Phantom Menace Hilt. Now guys, this one is a beautiful hilt. I did already own this one because this has been offered in the past at the parks. Uh, unfortunately, this one has been retired for a while, so it did fetch a pretty penny on eBay for a while and still kind of is. Even with the introduction of this set, it is still selling for four or five hundred dollars. Uh, so quite the pricey hilt. A lot of people have been looking to get their hands on one, so I'm, I'm glad for those of you that have finally been able to get this one in your collection because of this set. Um, but you can see, guys, a lot of really nice details here. This is like a plastic material. Uh, I believe on the actual hilt it's rubber, but that's okay. The activation switch is obviously not accurate to the films. I feel like they threw that in there from a design standpoint. It just made the most sense. Uh, but nevertheless, I think it is perfectly fine. Um, you can see here some really nice detail on all the little bobs and bits here. Uh, some nice knurling details on these knobs. Really, really well done. I think the machining's really good. Uh, these do have a blade plug pre-installed, and this is where you put the proprietary blade. Uh, sorry, guys, if you have NeoPixel blades for your fancy or sabers, they will not work with these. Uh, you have to get the proprietary blade that's either sold at the park or sometimes on the Shop Disney website. Uh, I'm not a, a big fan of all these uh, etched-in advertisements here, as I like to call them, but that's okay. Um, but again, guys, really, really nice saber. This one is on the thinner side. And the cool thing about the episode one hilt, there is a video of Ewan McGregor back when this uh, this film was being done. Uh, and Ewan McGregor actually talks about why he selected this saber. And there's a video of him kind of holding it in his hand and swinging it around and saying how like handy it is and how it felt really good in his hand. So that makes this one that much more special, uh, in my opinion. Again, just to note, all of these stickers are removable. I just have them on because this is how they arrive in the packaging. Also, guys, there are removable batteries. You just unscrew this kind of pommel cap here. This is a battery pack that removes. I'm not going to take it out fully, uh, but that's how you swap out the batteries. If you're wondering, these do come with batteries. Sorry, I couldn't get that screwed on there for a second. These do come with batteries pre-installed from the packaging, so that's cool. Um, and that's not exclusive to this set. If you get these sabers from the parks, uh, any of these Legacy sabers, they are uh, pre-installed in the hilts. Um, also, guys, this is on the thinner side compared to all of the other Legacy hilts that I own. I think this is actually the thinnest one, so it feels really good in the hand. Um, and it's been on the lighter side, but for some people that's okay because it gives you the ability to swing it around faster, you know? Um, so really, really nice hilt. And again, I know a lot of people are going to be excited for this one because it has been retired for quite a while. Moving on to the Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan Kenobi hilt. 
Um, this one is really special, guys. Uh, episode 3 is actually one of my favorite films. Uh, the prequels are really special to me. I'm a prequel baby. I got to see all of those in theaters. As much as I love the original trilogy, I never got a chance to see them in theaters because uh, that's past my generation. Uh, but this is really, really special to me. It feels really, really nice in the hand. It's definitely a bit thicker than typical custom versions of this lightsaber. Uh, but with that being said, it's not crazy thick at all. And I think in terms of accuracy, they did a pretty good job. You can see there's some nice kind of weathering beat up detail on that grenade looking portion as we like to call it. Um, really, really nice weathering all around here. The activation switch is very solid, not loose whatsoever. And you can see that design there is really, really nice, really deeply etched into the switch here. Um, also, you can see you have a nice thin neck emitter. And I will show you in a second, it does come with a swap out piece for when you want to put the blade in, because obviously this is just for show, but I'm glad they included this. There's some nice kind of scratches and grime up here as well. I think that's really cool, but you can see there's no way to put that blade in there uh, because it's way too small. This is just for show, so if you want to have it on your shelf, it's nice that they included that. Um, also, you do have a removable cap here on the bottom. I'm not going to take it all the way off, but you can see it just unscrews, and that's where your battery pack is. And you do also have a cover tech knob here. Uh, they do sell the clips at the parks that work with this knob. I imagine the third party ones probably work with this as well. I'm not positive, but this does appear to be the same cover tech knob that are on these custom lightsabers that people buy. All right, but let's remove this and put on the other emitter piece so I can show you what it looks like before you put a blade in it. All right, and here we are. And you can see this does kind of mess with the look quite a bit. But again, if you want to swing this saber around, bring it to the parks, have fun uh, around the house, uh, this is what you would put on. Definitely not the best for looks. You can see here if you remove this uh, faux blade plug, you're greeted with the inside of the lightsaber where you can put that proprietary Disney blade in there. Um, definitely cool that they have a swap out piece because if you're going to be just displaying these on your shelf like I am, uh, this is pretty ugly. I don't know why uh, anyone would keep it like this on their shelf. I know the older Force FX lightsabers had this style of emitter, so I'm sure that people who are upgrading to these are really, really excited about that. So definitely glad that they include that thin neck emitter with these. All right, guys, and finally, the one that a lot of people are really, really excited about as well. This is the A New Hope Obi-Wan Kenobi hilt, or Ben Kenobi, as we know him in the film. Uh, this one is obviously very special. Our first introduction to Obi-Wan as a character is in A New Hope, the very first Star Wars film that arrived in theaters in 1977. So this one is really, really special, guys. Uh, I think you can't really go wrong with any saber in this set, but this one has a lot of character to it, and obviously a lot of backstory behind it. You can see there's some incredible weathering detail on this saber. Obviously, the sands of Tatooine did not treat this guy well over the years. Uh, moving up to the emitter as well, you can see some nice weathering detail around the lip of the emitter. Moving down from the emitter, there's some scorching as well. It looks really, really good. Of course, in that grenade portion, plenty of weathering, just like on the Revenge of the Sith Saber. The emitter, very, very similar to the other one. We got some weathering in there as well. Uh, really, really nicely done. And I have never owned in a New Hope version of Obi-Wan's uh, Saber in my collection. So, of course, this is really special for me to own. I also really love the activation switch on the New Hope hilt. You have that, like, bubble strip. Uh, that's really iconic, and you see a bubble strip on Vader's hilts as well. Um, so this is really, really cool. This is not movable at all. It's fixed in place, but overall, this is such a beautiful saber, guys. I love this hilt so much. Uh, you do have, of course, a D-ring on this saber, so if you have a D-ring belt clip, this will work for that. And again, when you unscrew it, you are greeted with the battery pack underneath here. Um, let me also swap out this emitter piece on this one as well, because again, that is how it functions on these two. All right, and same process, and I didn't show you down in there, but you can see there's those are the uh, contact points here. Definitely a kind of a genius design from Disney. Whoever they hired to design these, uh, they did a great job. And I don't know if I've mentioned this, but all of these hilts feel really nice in the hand. I think they have some nice high quality metal for the price. Uh, I think the retail on this guy was five fifty before taxes, and for three lightsabers, you really can't beat it. Of course, the soundboards and such and the uh, the exact details aren't going to be the same as a custom lightsaber that you spend a ton of money on. But I think for the price and just for a display piece, these are really awesome and that box speaks volumes alone. But yeah, guys, this is how you put a blade in the lightsaber, of course, as I mentioned earlier. If I can get the blade plug out, you can see some nice weathering detail in there as well. Obviously, it looks very chunky and goofy, but if you want to swing it around, and again, if you ever go to Disney parks, you want to bring this around with you and take some cool pictures at night or whatever, this is how you would do it. 
But let's move on to the fun part of the video. I'm gonna throw a blade in each one of these, turn them on. I'll try to get a clip of all the different sounds. Uh, these aren't the most sensitive lightsabers and you'll kind of see that in the video, but I will do my best to show you what I can. And we're back. Uh, I just want to start by giving a big shout out once again to my friend Wolf Moon in the Discord and on YouTube. Uh, without him, I would have not been able to get this Spidey and or this lightsaber set. So thank you so much uh, for putting your back literally on the line and grabbing these for me. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I couldn't have done it without you. Uh, but guys, I think this is an absolutely wonderful set. I think a lot of you can appreciate this set, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. The packaging is absolutely beautiful. The fact that you open it up and it plays that iconic Force theme uh, just gives you goosebumps. The first time I opened it up, I was absolutely blown away. Uh, this is really, really special to me. Obi-Wan Kenobi is one of my favorite characters, and I think he does have some of the better hilt designs in Star Wars, in my opinion. Um, so this is really, really cool to own, and I'm very, very grateful to be able to own it. Unfortunately, this set is pretty pricey on eBay, guys, so definitely uh, look other places to get it. Uh, and, and typically on these sets, the prices do drop quite a bit as the resellers start putting up more and more. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the Temple Guard Hilt set and or the Ahsoka Tano set that released previously. So I'm glad that I was able to get this one. That makes me perfectly happy about missing the others because this is the most important one to me now. Um, but I hope you guys like this. I won't do a lot of different stuff like this often, but when I get something special in and it's really cool to me, I'm going to show it off to you guys because you guys are my friends. I like showing my friends my collectibles. So when I get something cool in like this, I really want to share it with you. Sorry for those that follow me just for the six scale stuff. Don't worry. I'm not going to be switching from six scale. This is just something to mix it up every once in a while, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of these hilts below. Of course, guys, you can't expect these to be the exact same quality as a six, $700 nice custom lightsaber. But I think for the retail price tag of $550, you can't go wrong. Uh, but thank you so much, guys, for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next week on Thursday for our weekly live stream.